there are successes that are good and there are successes that are bad. When we look at what you desire, when we look at what you celebrate, we can know the kind of person you are. When we look at what interests you, what are the things that make you happy, what are the people that are your mentors, who are the people you follow, we can really know the kind of person you are and what you are after. Example, when we mention missionaries, when we mention the church, when we mention evangelism, preachers don't impress you. Hallelujah. Good marriages don't impress you. Decent sisters don't impress you. Decent brothers don't impress you. But then there are people else that impress you. That is when you see people half naked, when you see people that are not missionary, when you see people doing things that are not godly, but then they are successful in their sense. If these are the people that impress you, it tells a lot of about who you are. Hallelujah. Now, there are successes that we have already shared in this month. There are successes that are good and there are successes that are bad. They are still success, but they are bad successes. Hallelujah. So the Bible says we will make our way prosperous and then we shall have what? Good success. Say with me, we shall have good success. Not every success is a good one. Hallelujah. Even though it may be something that is successful, but it is not a good success. Now, what is good success? Good success is success that have both earthly relevance and eternal consequence. There are things that have both earthly relevance and eternal consequence. While on earth, they are important. And then while also we get to heaven, there are things that heaven recognize and celebrate. There are things that human beings celebrate on earth. But then they may not necessarily be celebrated in heaven. Hallelujah. There are things human beings celebrate on earth to be successful. But in heaven, it will not be relevant. Number two, it means success that are based on scriptural principles. And the motivation is kingdom. Any success that is achieved on scriptural principles. A success that is achieved not on scripture is not a good success. It is still success, but not a good one. Hallelujah. Success that are based on what? Scriptural principles, based on the ethics of scriptures, based on the right scriptures. And then the motivation is kingdom. Now, success must never be measured based on popularity, fame, or fortune. We don't measure success based on popularity alone or based on how famous it is. We measure success based on obedience, faithfulness, and righteousness. So something may be popular, but it is not good success before God. Are we together? Something must be famous, but it's not good success before God. Something must be of fortune. It may be a great discovery. A good success is measured based on obedience to the word of God, faithfulness, and how righteous it is. Hallelujah. It is important for people listening to this message that this message was preached on what is today's date? 17th of May. Hallelujah. There are things that are popular and are celebrated. There are records that people break. Those are not necessarily the definition of success. Even though successes break record. Come on, are we together? Until that record is broken based on faithfulness of God, obedience to the will of God, and based on righteousness. You can make record that does not tally with the word of God. There are many Guinness book of record. There are many records that people have. Hallelujah. Make many, many records. There are many people that are popular on earth and they are successful based on the earth's success. But there are many people also in the kingdom that are not popular. They are not differently from men in matthew chapter 11 verse 11 the bible clearly put john the baptist as the greatest prophet that ever lived hallelujah now normally speaking naturally when they say mention a character in the bible in the old testament that was the greatest who will you mention 
Hallelujah. Moses. Me, my favorite character in the Old Testament is Jeremiah. Hallelujah. I, I love Jeremiah so much. For some people will see David as the greatest person, Moses as the greatest person, or Elijah that brought down fire three times, or Elisha that rose the dead. But John the Baptist did not do one miracle. He didn't raise the dead. He was not, a, he was not called a major prophet. He didn't live long. He didn't do anything major. The Bible says, Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, of all that was born of a woman, there was no person that was ever greater than John the Baptist. Verily, verily, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Hallelujah. So sometimes there are things that men celebrate and to God is not. That is why some preachers sometimes say that there are people in heaven that will be more celebrated than the people we see on screen. It ha- one side of the truth is true and there's another side of the coin. Hallelujah. Or one coin, side of the coin is true. There are true. There are people that are not popular, that are not known. You see, one thing we must notice is men are moved by what they see. The person that brought two extra talents, the Bible says, good and faithful servant because he functioned based on his capability. And the person that brought five was called also good and faithful because that was his capability. Are we together? So sometimes, the what we call productivity talent ratio. If God has given you the capability to produce five, you produce five, God will call you good and faithful. We must understand example in the ministry is there are people that God has called and given them international ministries. Not everybody has an international ministry. Not everybody. There are people that God has given them a ministry that is just local. Not local in the sense that it can be territorial. If they are faithful in that territorial ministry, they are still considered successful. Come on, all together. Yes. Okay, I want to ask you, like, just logically thinking, the person that led Rehad won't get to Christ. And the person that pastor a 1,000 Sida congregation, who will be greater? <laughs> Think about it. Who will be greater? Or the person that led Billy Graham, I heard that he got saved in, in a crusade. He was the only one that came with that altar That's the story I read. Now, that evangelist and another evangelist that has miracles, who will be greater? And Billy Graham didn't have miracles in his crusade till he's dead. I heard that there was one time he had a miracle and then he said they should not be in an because he was not called to preach miracles. He stayed on John 3, 16 till dead. So most times there are things that heaven rate different from men. Hallelujah. So we must be conscious of that as believers. And then thirdly, before I share with who says, we cannot use secular manuals for our lives to measure our success. We must stay with the word of the Lord. In Acts chapter 17 verse 28, the Bible says, In him we live and move and have our being. Our standard is the Bible. Our motivation is scriptures. We don't use secular standard to measure our success. Come on, are we together? We don't use secular standard to compare our sisters. The way they should look. We don't use secular standard to compare our brothers the way we should look. We don't look secular presentation. You know, most times, recently, uh, not recently, like five years ago, there was a lot of talk that the church should become like the world, like preaching and doing all those kind of seminars. We cannot use secular standard to measure success in the kingdom. We cannot use it. Because the moment we start using it, we become unfair and we don't achieve a lot. That's why the Bible says there is good success. You see, one thing about the world is the world is changing. Today, the world will tell you a good woman is a woman that is shaped like a guitar. That is, she has a good shape. Tomorrow, they will tell you a good woman is a woman. Now, now men are tired of everything the world has said. Now, men are marrying robots. Are we together? Because now, now, if they say we should measure the robot, now how will you measure it? We cannot use the world standard. In the world, he that has money is successful. Forget anything you say. If you don't have money, some people will say, what did you gain? Like, money is everything. Everything. If we use that standard in the church, you will be unfair. 
And many people from the world have come to churches and used that standard on a church. Until a church is rich, it is not successful. Until a church has X, Y, Z, it is not successful. Until a pastor has X, Y, Z, it is not successful. Until a sister. So, those things are necessary, but we just cannot use secular example until a musical artist has been able to sing and reach 5 million people or something like that. We cannot use that standard to measure success. We cannot use their standard. See, it will be unfair to use the rule of football in basketball. Don't you think so? It will be unfair to use the rule of handball on, on volleyball too, or basket on volleyball. It's not the same rule. So the rule of the circular world, the Bible says we shall have good success. That means there's also bad success. The rule for bad success is different from good success. We cannot use their manuals. Hallelujah. That is why we cannot learn about marriages from secular people. Never. We can never learn from them. It's not as if there is something we can learn. We cannot learn from them. You know, one time I told someone this. You know, what happened was a particular pastor confronted uh, a particular blogger that was speaking against Bishop Oedipo and he said, don't ever do it. If you do it, I will sue you. Then somebody was saying, why should the pastor confront him? He should allow him. Then the pastor, the guy told me, even in Big Brother Nigeria, there was a guy that did something wrong. The guy did not confront him. I told him, he said that we can even learn from him. We may not support Big Nigeria, but we can learn from him. I told him I will never learn anything from Big Brother Nigeria. Because there are many good things. Okay, some people will say, okay, we can learn from secular music. Or we can learn from bad movies. And remove the good part. We have enough good examples to learn from. That we don't have to go to any bad source to learn something. Come on, are we together? We have enough good examples. There are some people who say, leave Bible like that. Let's talk about real life. Everything is in the Bible. If the Bible does not contain it, then it's not good. Yes. We can never use circular malwans in our life. Never. In our marriages, in our relationship, in our finances. In the finances, in the circular world, there's nothing like Titan. Nothing like Titan. What they do, they call it charity. And charity is given to the underprivileged unto the poor. But that is not what the Bible calls Titan. Titan is given to the house of the Lord. Are we together? Yes, it's different. We can never use their manual in the church. It will not work. Just like we cannot use the rule of volleyball in basketball. It will never work. Now, if you apply volleyball rule, you will succeed in the volleyball court. Are we together? If you apply football rules, you will succeed in the pitch. So if you apply the scriptures, you will succeed and have good success. And if you apply their manual, you will truly succeed in their world. But we are for the church. And we are out for good success. Hallelujah. We must always focus on God's reply and direction on what we do. And not what men are saying. We must always only focus on what God is saying. Jesus said, I am not like them who seek the praises of men. But my honor and my affirmation is from the Lord. See, we must focus on whose statement about my success is most important. About my life, whose statement is important? What do people say? We live in a world where everything is toxic. Like people are so dependent on what people say such that a bad comment on their Facebook page or on WhatsApp can send some people on depression. One negative comment from men, you are a failure, you are this, you are this. It, it, it matters to people. We must focus on what God says. If God calls you a success, you are a success. Come on, are we together? If the Bible says you are fearfully and wonderfully made, then you are fearfully and wonderfully made. We must focus on God. Is it that what people say is not important? Most times when God says good things about you, there are men that will always affirm it. But our main focus must be on God. Come on, are we together? What the world sees success or calls success is different from the God. Now, how do we measure good success? Number one, good success have eternal value. Good successes have what? Eternal value. We will have benefit on earth, but greater 
is the eternal value that they produce. Revelation chapter 14 verse 13. The Bible says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the day which are the dead, <coughs> which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their work, or they may rest from their labors, and their works, what? Do follow them. Are we together? Now, there are things we do on earth that will follow us to heaven. And there are things that we do on earth that have zero eternal consequence. For instance, if you break a Guinness record of climbing the tallest mountain, the first set of people that climb Mount Kilimanjaro, because one person cannot climb Mount Kilimanjaro, it's always a team of 64 people. Yes, there is a level you will get them 50. 32 people will continue the level will get because people will go with back and foot. One person cannot climb. So people have been dying. So the first set we are like 30 something. And then that was a record. Hallelujah. Now I want to ask you, do you think there is an a heavenly consequence about the person that climbed Mount Kilimanjaro first? Do you think there will be any reward in heaven or an eternal consequence that you climb Mount Kilimanjaro first? Nothing. Okay. Like we have the Guinness Book of Record of the fastest person that ran. Do you think in heaven the person will be recognized? What about football? The person that has seven ballon d'ors. Of course, I'm a football fan. Today I'm, I'm praying for Madrid to win. I watch, I'm not against football at all. I together. Yeah. But I'm not talking about that. eternal consequence. Do you think seven ballon d'ors will be any significant in heaven? Like there are things that we do that don't follow us and have zero in. Okay, how about the, the most important, the person that won several Nobel Prizes? A good success, we measure it by the eternal value. The value of it. Come on, are we together? Yes. Just like the way we know a currency is the way when we compare it to other currencies, what is the value? So there are things that we are doing on earth that will follow us to heaven. And that we must focus on those things. Hallelujah. Focus on those things. For Christ's sake, we have less than a hundred years to live. No matter how all of us are here. If we had hundred years to your years. You know, I saw a picture of somebody from Ikiti State. 136 years. Just, and the wife is still alive. And then they had grand-grandchildren. It was a great-grandchild that was holding the person. When I look at the person, 136 years. The way the man was looking, I prayed to God, Lord, let me not see these days in my life. <laughs> hey! The man cannot close his mouth. He was, he was like a living cause. But there's a way you get to in life, you're a burden again. What are you doing? I want to, like, you cannot, you just carry him outside and bring him inside. What's the life? No, I don't want to reach that age. No, I don't want it. I, where you are just pain all over the body, I just there, yeah, praying for death. And they say the man is praying to die. So no matter what you do, no matter the success you have, it has a time lapse. Come on, now we together. It has a time lapse. And some of the, the bad thing is that successes cannot be transferred to children. That is one bad side. Even a med medical decree cannot be transferred to your children. So we must have things that have eternal value. That when we get to heaven... These things that we did on earth will have heavenly consequence. Come on, are we together? That is what we call good success. Secondly, it is, it is the means, I'm talking about how we measure good success. The means of the success must be approved by God. How you rose to success or how you acquire that success status, hallelujah, must be approved by God. In 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13 to 15, the Bible spoke about the works of men being bound after rapture. You know, in Matthew 7, 22 to 23, the Bible says, there are people that will come to him and say, we did this in your name, we cast out demons by your name. Jesus said, verse 23 says, go for I know you not. What you do must be approved by God. If not, it's not success. You know, it's imagine to hear that somebody can cast out demons and then God is not approving him. 
It's something that is very, very difficult to understand. I've listened to a lot of documentaries about that scripture. There are a lot of explanation. Some people say the spirit they used was not of God. Some people say God did not send them. But all manner, but the, 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 the fact that, you remember Acts 16, seven sons of Sceva tried to cast out the demons and the demons flogged the, the guys, the men. Now, these demons respected those human beings and they left. They did many miraculous work all together. But the Bible says heaven didn't approve it. It's a shocking thing. Hallelujah. At the age of, is it 45 or 50? I can't remember. But Kenny E. Hagen has been in the ministry for 20 plus years. Then God said, you are about to start your ministry. He said, I called you to be a prophet and you said you are a teacher. And he said, if you don't start your prophetic work, I will call you home. So sometimes there are things we may do and then we are successful at it. It's working. Come on, now we're together. It's working. But the Bible, as far as God is concerned, he is not approving it. It's not approved of God. Just like you can start an institution, you have to be accredited by the board. They have to come and investigate whether it has met to standard. I pray that what we are doing, God will approve it. Hey, amen. You paid me to see that all my fasting is wasted. God will say, you know, a particular man of God said he fasted one time until he collapsed in his room. Look, a pastor looking for the church to grow, looking for the ministry. And then the Holy Spirit told him, Who sent you? <laughs> like, who sent you to fast? Like, it was like Mitchell, I'm fasting for the church to grow. Say, This fast, who sent you? Ah, well, you know, it's not harmful that you're doing something sincere, you want the church to grow. He fasted till he wanted to die. Say, who sent you? It's Bishop Dago. Uh -huh. Before you think one small person, it's Bishop Dago. The Holy Spirit say, who sent you? Say, he went to a far place to pray. Nobody knew where he was. He didn't give anybody address. Seeking the face of God and fasting. The last thing he remember was he was on the floor. Then the Holy Spirit say, you are told who sent you to this place? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, we can be doing things that are not approved by God. And sometimes the body, the, you know, one thing about the principles of life is principles are not dependent on religion, but they are dependent on obedience. Whosoever, like the principle of success, uh, or like the principle of owning this bulb is switching the switch. A Muslim, a Buddhist, anybody that switch the switch, it will come on. All together. So people can do a lot of things and succeed, but until heavens approve it, is not true success. The third way to measure good success is, is what is the rating of heaven about that success. In Matthew chapter 16 verse 26, the Bible says, what will you profit a man if he gains the whole world but what? Loses his soul. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul. Hallelujah. Now, there are many things. Now, it's no longer news that people exchange their souls for wealth, right? I, think that, I don't think that one is no longer news in the world now. Before, it used to be a hidden agenda. Now, it's popular that people sell their souls to gain a lot of things. But the Bible clearly says that when you put the value of earthly success and the value of their soul, this is more important. Come on. Are we together? Yeah, what is the rating of heaven on earth? When God rates the value of what we have achieved. You know, the Bible says, there are what we call different, if you read, if you're a King James Bible reader, there are what we call shekels in the Bible. You will not notice different type of shekels. We have the shekels of the temple, shekels of the king. All of them measure, the what they say, according to the shekels of the temple, according to the shekels of the king, because the measurement of a king is one of the highest. Hallelujah. It's one of the highest. So sometimes the way heaven rates your success is very, very important. Number three, or number four way to measure good success is that that success must benefit humanity and cause them zero harm. Some people succeed at the expense of humanity. Their success is at the expense of humanity. 
And let me explain. Praise the Lord. Now, many people have released. Let me use. Let me use the entertainment industry for example. Now, somebody can produce a movie, and then, or let's use the example the Hollywood nowadays. The Hollywood is it a successful industry? It's successful, right? Come on, let's. It's successful. Just that it may be a bad success, but is it a successful industry? We have to admit that Hollywood is a successful industry. We have good success and bad success, but. All of them are this success. Are we together? It's still a successful ministry. But then the success of Hollywood is at the expense of humanity. What I mean by that is what they succeed at. Example, they teach people values that destroy humanity. Like after consuming their product, humanity is destroyed. They teach all manner of sexual perversions. Mother sleeping with daughter, teenagers sleeping with elder people, all manner of pornography. Now they teach gays. It's like every movie that is a gay person. Like they're shaping the culture. And then they make millions of, of millions of dollars out of those movies. And then instantly those celebrities become successful. Some celebrities sing songs and they become successful. Example, let's mention, like, Nigerian musicians, most of them are successful, right? They are really successful. But if you notice that their success is at the detriment of humanity, listening to their songs ruin people. It doesn't build people. Somebody sang a song and said, Codeine Diet. You know that song, like years ago? Like it was on a codeine diet. That year was when people were high everywhere. Somebody sang a song of different, like all manner of songs. When you listen to the song, it's all about sex, alcohol, drugs, women, gang. Now, that success is at the expense of humanity. Come on, are we together? It's at the expense of humanity. So, a good success must be as you are succeeding, other people are succeeding. Like when Jesus became a success in Joshua, in John chapter 19 verse 30, he said that it is finished. Now, his success was also because as Jesus succeeded and got the name of Jesus, the whole of humanity also succeeded. The success of Jesus became our success. His rising became our rising. Hallelujah. His success became a success. There are many people that will never be where they are today, even not be that they are their boy. Hallelujah. If not for Bishop David, if not for some of the pastors that God have raised, they themselves have become successful. But in their success, they destroy no man. Yeah. So the success must have maximum benefit to humanity. Number five way to measure good success is that it must bring a plus to the kingdom. Every success must advance the kingdom. When we look at the aim of that success and the totality of that success, the name of the Lord must be glorified. The kingdom must be featured. Are we together? There was this artist that won, uh, what is the name? Is it Amudat? What's her name? That female girl. Eh? Amusin, right? Yes. Huh? Yes. Was it, what was the record? World record? Is it Olympic record or something like that? You notice that when she won, she popularly on the stage of the world, she put the name of Jesus Christ. Called the name of Jesus Christ. Thank God for what he has done. Said where she is was because of Jesus Christ. Are we together? Like the kingdom is being featured. There is this boxer that, this is Mike Tyson. No, not Mike Tyson. There was a white guy, Fury. Tyson Fury. You know Tyson Fury? The guy that before his battle with, um, what was that? was that guy that they did a hundred million battle. Before the battle, he said that Jesus will give me the victory. And now that guy said, I said, I will beat Jesus out of you. <laughs> By miraculously, Mike uh, Fury won. And then when the commentator asked him before the wall, how did you want? He said, Jesus did it. And then BBC took his picture off. Because once you begin to mention Jesus, CNN and BBC take you off. Yes. Everyone that, if you, if you can go Google on YouTube, interview about Jesus. Once you, they say Jesus, they will say, say the negro has gone off. It has been the pattern of CNN and BBC. Once Jesus did it, they cut him off. But anybody that mentioned Jesus at the realm of success is cut off. Now, you know, there was a guy that became the president of America. 
The guy was from Africa. And when he became the president, African churches were doing vigil during his campaign. American churches like Kenneth Copeland, the whole of the evangelical were campaigning for him. Everybody was praying that he should become the president. And then he became the president. You know, when you become the president, the first thing people want to hear is the people you acknowledge in your acceptance fee. Speech, sorry. You know, the acceptance speech, speech of somebody says a lot about the person, the loyalty of the person and what he will do in the office. When the man came into office, he acknowledged everybody, including his dog, including his pet, and didn't mention the church of Jesus Christ once in the speech. He was the one that removed Christmas from the White House before Donald Trump brought it back. He was the one that sang on the church. His success had no kingdom benefit at all. Come on, are we together? Now, there are laws in the Nigeria Senate currently going on. You know, the Poland said there are people that they claim they are Christians sitting in the Senate, but they are quiet and useless. Like they have been promoted. In the Senate today, we have 57% Christians. I'm talking about religion, Christian. <laughs> they are over 57%. That means any rule against Christianity should not work. Because by simple rule, majority carry the vote, right? So the A and the R, the A have it. That is a simple rule. So when there's a law, as a matter of fact, the minority should be afraid of making a rule tentatively against the faith. But their success in the Senate has no kingdom relevant at all. Remove CRS from the Christian uh, from 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 the curriculum and replace it with I, 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 uh, IRS or replace it from uh, some courses. You are there sleeping and dozing. Remove put the law of karma against the church. They were there. I didn't know how the thing didn't work. Thank God it didn't work. Now there is a law again to sanction the preaching of preachers in Nigeria. It has passed the first and second reading. To sanction the preaching of... You know, one thing that people don't learn is history have taught us that people don't learn from history. And that is the problem. Because to regulate preachers did it start from Africa? It start from America. And how did it end? Even Russia with somebody like Vladimir Putin could not regulate it. You cannot regulate the church. It's a, it's a failure that will never work. But the, the bad thing is that there are people that though successful in that highest rank of power, their success has no kingdom relevant at all. Come on, at all. So when you are successful, it must bring a plus to the kingdom. Then if not, it's not a good success. When we reference your success, the kingdom must be featured. So that people can learn that because nowadays it is proof that it is not possible to succeed as a righteous man. That is it's a secular or it's a popular opinion in the world. Like it is difficult to be in politics until you mar your hand. Right? Like it is difficult to rise in the banking industry until you mar your hand. It is difficult to rise in the music industry. The lady that acted uh, that the Adebe movie in the movie, uh, what's the name of the movie? Enoch said she was in the, in the Nigerian Hollywood before. And then why she couldn't rise was sometimes she, could, she can be in the movie scene to suit. And then they will come and remove her name and put somebody else. Why? Because she refused to sleep with X, Y, Z. Now it's like, you cannot succeed without doing certain things. Now, when God raises you and you are able to succeed as a righteous person, your announcement of the kingdom will be an inspiration to people that it is possible. Come on, now we together. Because it is truly possible. If Joseph can do it in Egypt alone... Without intercessory team, without pastor, that means it's possible. If Daniel can do it in Babylon alone with the three friends he had, that means it's possible. Come on, now we together. Our success must bring a plus to the master and to the kingdom. People must know that Jesus did it. There was this footballer, his name was Kaka. That time when he scored a goal, he lit up his shirt and then he was written what? Jesus. That is the way to announce. Now, now, nowadays, people celebrate and they do yoga sign. Yeah. Popularly, they do yoga sign. This guy in Africa, uh, 
the two guys in Africa, let me not be mentioning names, hallelujah, when they celebrate, they go and do their, they hit their forehead to the ground publicly. None of them have been sanctioned before. But all the Christian people were sanctioned. They said they are bullying people with their religion. I wonder, what about this one? It's not the religion. It is, it is really baffling how the world has gone against Christianity. But I know that when God leaves you, you will be bold enough to stand for Jesus Christ. Come on. Did you hear me? It will bring a plus to the kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Because of you, things will be done for the church. When you are in a position of authority, and then a church come, you know, when, when, when I was in the, in the house, family house, we wanted to approve our building. We were building a story building that time. And then the design, the design was, of course, it was not done by a professional. It was done by the student architect. But then we went to the body here, the state, to approve the building. Our log that made it went through for that building to be approved was because we met a Christian woman. What is it? Where are we from? Is it from NCCF? Are you a church? You are a church? You are building this for the church? Okay, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. The structure was wrong. This was wrong. She pointed, sir. The, the only thing that was right there was us coming. <laughs> like, everything else was wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this is wrong. This is wrong. Okay. I will do this for you all. But this one, I cannot do it. I will talk to this person. He will do it. The normal bill is 250K. But I will talk to him. He will pay 60K for two of them. She did it. Approved it in two months. Stamped it. And we had a document. And then we left. That is what we mean by being useful for the kingdom in position of authority. Let the kingdom feel your impact. You know, I am from where? From the part of the country where I came from. Once they have their own at the top. Hey! Forget it. The rest will be their own. They can be in any good. If they are the head in that institution, be sure that the next recruitment, 60% is their own. You will hear Mustafa is the bank manager of FCMB in any good. Huh? Like that. See, and then what they will do is they will calculate 15 years down the line. So that if this one retire by the 15 years, this one will be qualified, qualified, qualified. He will be the one that will take over legally. Like they think 30 years ahead. But there are Christians that will be there, something about the kingdom, something about the church. You are there and then there are some, you are successful, you are in the place of power. And then they are saying something against the church, against the, the kingdom, against the people you love. And then you are quiet. You watch them. And you say nothing. A good success is a plus to the kingdom. Hallelujah. It's always a plus to the kingdom. The kingdom improves. Hallelujah. And number six way to know a good success is that you, you succeeded in obedience to the kingdom or to God. Let me put it this way. Now in Matthew 26 verse 39 and 42 was Jesus praying in Gethsemane. He prayed twice. One, two, thrice. He prayed thrice. Hallelujah. Now Jesus said he had a will. And then that will was for the cup to pass over him. But then he said, not my will, but let your will be done. Come on, are we together? It is important that we succeeded in obedience to God. In First Samuel chapter 15 verse 22, the Bible says, Obedience is always stronger than sacrifice. To obey is higher than the blood of bulls. Example, God instructed you, do this. Do it. You can go somewhere else and still succeed, but it will not be a good success. Hallelujah. Heaven must be able to look at your work and say, good and faithful servant. In Matthew 25 verse 23, the master said, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. So, every good success, the heaven must speak well about it. So, how do we measure good success? How can we know a good success? Number one is what? It has what? Come on, I'm not hearing us. Number one is what? The successes must have eternal value, not just early relevance. Come on, are we together? Number two is what? The means of the success, because in this kingdom, not only the result is our concern, but also the means. The means of the success must be what? Approved by God. Number three. 
the rating must be the rating of heaven over it must be good, right? Number four was what? The manifest benefit. The success must not be detrimental to humanity. Now, there are many drug lords that are successful, but their success is at the detriment of human beings. There are many politicians that are successful. Some successes are at the detriment of others. That is what I'm trying to say. It is not a good success if as you are rising, you know, there's a song in Hausa that says, okay, in English it says, if somebody fell down and somebody stands up, nobody has risen. Do you understand? Yes. If somebody falls and somebody stands, you know, some people say that let, let somebody be pulled. So that, no, the sky is big enough for us. Your success must not be at the detriment of other human beings. You are selling fake drugs and you are making money because, see, in the world, the richest people, the first seven and eight, none of them is into oil and gas. That's what you want to understand. And when you go to Forbes, few people are into oil and gas. The richest people are into technology, pharmaceutical industry, drugs. Is one of the richest company in the world, and then most of them are, are. In fact, there was a time that syringe it recorded that over three thousand people died of HIV because of the syringe that they were using that time. Because the, as they're injecting people, people come under over drugs. I re, I watched a documentary, a large documentary of a nurse that fought it in the in the court in America until it was passed. That people will be struck and they're struggling. The syringe, and you know when he touches, he leaves you and touches you. It used to peel from the mouth. But then, for over 25 years, America refused to change that syringe. Why? Because it was patented, and the person, the government, were benefiting from the share of the court. So, despite the Bible, nurses were having HIV, doctors were having HIV. They refused it. Until they fought it, they fought it. Two people fought it. In fact, one lost his life while he was fighting it. He was a lawyer. Before they, so, there are people that have succeeded in fake drugs, all manner of things, at the success of others. Some of the richest people today, when you go to America, especially South America, even North America, are into drugs. But you see, their success is at the expense of others. When they will come, they will tell people, get them hooked on drugs fast. Because the more hooked they are, the more they buy and the more we succeed. Come on, are we together? So if your success has a detrimental effect on someone, when somebody listening to your song, and after listening to your song, what they think about is masturbation, sex, money, and then they destroy their life. Let me tell you something. See, internet has 80% traffic of pornography. Most of it from movies and from songs. And then when somebody consumes your product, and then they are, they are making money. If you know how much these guys make from these three means that you will not believe it. You will not believe. I'm telling you. Some people make 500,000, no, 500,000 US dollars. Some people make 2.5, one, one, I just saw one recently, 6 million US dollars from streaming of nonsense. There is a guy called, called Joe Cole. I don't know if you know him. Recently he sang a song for a guy called Lil Dog, Lil Devil, Lil Darkness. In his song, the guy said, if he sings for you in your song, every word, in his verse is two thousand dollars. Yes, every word. Let's enter the car. That's how many words. Let's enter the car. That is how many words. Four words. Two times four. That is eight eight thousand dollars has dropped. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's, it's online. I can confirm. One word is two thousand US dollars. <laughs> that is what it means to write. Hey. But then when you listen to the song, all my life to the devil, destructive. So what you must do must benefit other people. Are we together? As you are rising, people are benefiting. Number next is it must bring a plus to the mass and the kingdom. It must be done. So how, then finally, I'm closing now. The benefit of having good success, number one, is that it comes without sorrow. In Proverbs 10, 22, the Bible says, The blessing of the Lord make it rich and what? Added no sorrow. Bad successes always have a shade of sorrow. Every bad success have a shade of sorrow in it. Every. Hallelujah. Absent, total. 
the blessing of the Lord, it make it rich. And what? Added no sorrow. If you mention one person at the top, I can tell you one bad thing the person is crying about. Like I have studied research about this guy. Like there is always something in their life. The devil always leaves his thumb of sorrow in them. That is why the highest rate of the highest rate of um, depression is in celebrities. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And the highest rate of suicide before used to be India. You know India now? Before. Because India is one of the most demonized nations in the world. It used to be there. But now the highest rate of suicide is back to America. That is one of the most successful industry nations in the world. But that is where they are full of sorrows. They are not happy. Like you have the money, you have the car. That is why you read stories online every time. A millionaire ran his Lamborghini to a pole and died. A millionaire ran his Ferrari to the river and died. A this bunny is You keep hearing stories. They are not happy. There is always sorrow tied to what they have. That is a disadvantage of having a bad success. I watched a clip today by First Lady in, on, on YouTube about success. What is the benefit of having a good relationship, having a lot of this without happiness, without peace? Sorrows is not a good thing to have. Hallelujah. You know, the truth is that, eh, we know when I was much younger, I told myself, it's because, and I've had people say it too, it's because Solomon was rich. That was why he was saying that vanity is upon vanity. Me, let me have it first. When I have it first, then I will know whether it's vanity. Have you ever said that kind of thing? Did you say it before? Oh, you two, you have said it. Yeah, I've said it before. Like, me too, like, like, me too, let me have it first. As I agree with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit asked me one day. He said, why are you not smoking? I said, because it's not bad. Why don't you smoke first so that you know why that it's not really bad? I said, no, now even commerce will tell me it's bad. Then that is why belief, if you can believe, then believe what Solomon said, that it is vanity. You don't have to have it before you know it's vanity. You don't have to have it. Good success come with peace. Come on now together. Peace. 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 The Bible says it is better to eat. Let me use it in a way we can understand. It's better to drink gari without sugar than to eat a McDonald's with a quarrelsome wife. That's what the Bible says. Like it's better to eat under the corner than to dwell in the house with a quarrelsome wife. It's better to eat something than to eat a meal with a stall ox. You may not know what you have today. You will pray to have it back when I know you know go for bad success. For people that have bad success, you know, I have watched a lot of interviews of celebrities when they want to die. They ask them, What will you want to do? So that if they will have a chance in their life, is to go back to where they were before fame. 2022, December, Ronaldo was interviewed. He said, what is one thing he will want to have? He said that freedom. He said that he's no longer free. He cannot go to the pitch with his child. He said that he wants freedom. He wish he can go back to the days when he was not famous. Having peace must be cherished. And we must celebrate it. Are we together? Yes. You will not like to have a good success without peace. There are many people today that can't sleep in their house. I read a documentary today about a guy that was on what? Because of his trouble, he was, in, he was having insomnia. Insomnia means absence of sleep. He had to take drugs to sleep for over three years. Despite being a multi-millionaire in dollars. So, good success brings absence of dollars. I say absence of dollars. Absence of words. Sorrows. Hallelujah. Number two. Benefit of good success. The Bible says, you will enter into the joy of the Lord. Internal reward. Matthew 25, verse 24 to 26. Matthew 25, 21 to 24. After the success of the man, the Bible says, Enter after the man had five more talents, two more talents. He said, Good and faithful servant, enter thou into what? The joy of the Lord. When we enter before heaven, some of us will be wearing crown. I pray I wear a crown, Lord. Help me. Hallelujah. There are people that will be crowned. I wonder how a real bonke will be. I wonder how Billy Graham will be. I wonder how those people will be. 
There is a joy in the Lord that we will enter when we have good successes. Number three is what we call you will have generational success. It will be lasting success. In Genesis 12 verse 7, the one of the persons that had a good success was Abraham. The Bible said the covenant is with him and his seed. All good men live an inheritance. You know, there was, there was a time, there is a president in this country. I heard seven years ago that his children were begging on the street. I don't know if I've heard, ever heard about stories like that. Recently, I also heard about a story, I read it online, about a millionaire in Lagos that was into 419 that can lodge girls in Sheraton for 28 days. Because he didn't have time, he was seeing other women, that he was rich, he was a, that time is 419, it's not Yahoo, Yahoo, Yahoo is a modern name. That time he was, he was into 419. And then he had a lot of money, he had a lot of money, he was wealthy. And then the thing started backfiring. And then they say he's still alive. He's in Lagos. But he's driving a car and he's living in a, like, he's doing Molwe. You know Molwe? So yeah. His friend had to give him a house. His wife and the children have gone abroad and they abandoned him and they left him. Yeah. The picture of him that I saw, he was dying, sick, dried. See, it's not generational. A genuine success is something you can hand over to your children and say, you take this house. You take this business. It's, it's genuine. The papers, the documents are clear. Nobody will come and fight. There's no gang battle. There's no battle anywhere. A good success is always generational. When we look at your success and it's truly good, it must affect your children. The children may waste it, but they will get to them. Most of them, bad sources are wasted by children. But a good success is long-lasting. May our success be long-lasting. Come on, in the name of Jesus Christ. May we be able to do something that will last long in the name of Jesus. Heaven will celebrate good success and reward it. Yes. When Jesus succeeded, he was rewarded in heaven. When we succeed, we will be rewarded in heaven. You know, um, it's still arguable. But theologically, the Bible says when Stephen was stoned, he looked up and saw the father standing. Some people say Jesus stood to receive him in honor. Some people, so there are different arguments about it. But the, the summary is all of us, when we truly succeed, we are celebrated in heaven. Come on, now together. The one that we like that is good is that we will also prosper on earth. I'm not talking about us going to heaven alone. We will prosper on earth. The first, there was a time, I, got, I think, when I was still in school, so 2014, 2015, that the Adebayo was the number one influential man in Africa. I don't know if you remember the time, if you knew the time. Yes. So I'm not talking about us only being relevant in heaven. Also on earth will be useful. I'm not saying we'll be begging on earth while we are thinking about heaven. This world is not my own. I'm just a passing through. Treasures are laid down. Far beyond the blue. The angels beck on me. In what? In heaven. I don't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, no, 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 no. Hallelujah. We will also succeed on this. At Mark 10, I've shown this scripture to us several years. Mark 10, 29 to 30. The Bible says we will have treasures. He that has abandoned his mother and sister will have blessings on this earth. That doesn't mean we will be begging on this earth. Oh, our names will not be known. We can still win Guinness Book of Records. Come on, now together. Why don't you attend breaking Guinness Book of Records being without food? Waiting on the Lord for how many days? Jesus did 40 days. At least somebody has done it so we can we need to break his record. <laughs> Don't you think so? 60 days. Hallelujah. You will answer in heaven. Why will send you? <laughs> Hallelujah. But your name will also be known. Believers are in the Guinness Book of Records. Hallelujah. Billy Graham is there. Many people are there. So also on earth. I'm not saying we'll not be useful on earth or we'll be broke on earth. Or will suffer on earth. Good success, we will also prosper on this earth. See, a sign that God approves on, of you always shows on this earth. There is no way that God will approve you in heaven and it will not be seen on this earth. It's impossible. If God says you are good and approved in heaven, there is a way it will show on this earth. That's why the Bible says they had favor with God and with men. Hallelujah. Arguably, some people say you can have favor with God and not have favor with men. I know you have had people say that, right? 
Yes, some people say you can have a book of God. So I'm not, I, I'm not subject to anybody's revelation. So me to have to have the right to say my own. But I believe it's not possible that God will favor you and men will not favor you. It's impossible. You just have to learn how to relate with men and translate the favor. Oh, when God said, this is my beloved son, you become beloved. No, people, even people that hate you will love you. Because the Lord has favored you. So there is no way God will approve you, no matter how little you are. If God approves you, you will succeed. You know this song, you are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, oh Lord. You know the guy that sang the song? It was Israel Horton, right? But do you know the guy that got the song? The guy that got the song was from South Africa in a village. He could not even sing in English. He sang it in the Zulu language. And then it was translated to English. And then it was sung in America. And then the, no, it was sung in South Africa. And they're popular in the world. And then he has a royalty out of that song for life. In that, if God approves of you in this city, it's just like a native doctor that has been approved by the devil. He is known by men. Is that true? Even if he's in a village that is 15 hours walk, people will find him there and bless him. So if God approves of you, no matter how little and hidden you are, people will find you and bless you. So I don't believe in just being approved in heaven and then it will not show on earth. It will always show. Come on now, we're together. It will show. So don't be, be addressed that we will not... It's possible to eat a good meal in a peaceful wife, in a peaceful marriage. Are we together? It's possible to have money and have resources. It's possible. Because all the examples in the Bible... All of them. Abraham was prosperous. Did it affect his spirituality? Abraham was successful. Did it affect his spirituality negatively? David. Solomon is a woman that changes her own money. Right? Job. Job was what? The richest person. Still, he didn't affect. So, it's possible to train yourself that God will bless you with finances and it will not get to you. Come on, are we together? Yes, yeah, so it will always show on earth. And I know we'll have good successes in this name. Come on, in the name of Jesus Christ. Good successes always multiplies. Success, one of the definitions is succeeding in succession. When you have a good success, it will always lead to more success. May we not be inspired. Like I said in the beginning, the people that inspire you says a lot about you. The kind of people that are your role model. The kind of people you defend. The kind of people you are interested in. The kind of people you celebrate. Hallelujah. We will never see you post something about a church movement, a revival. Can you come? Can you come? Can you come? But somebody will cook. And you will not allow us to rest in this country. You will never like you. That, I'm, 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 okay, I'm not, not, not all of you. I've not seen anybody here post. I'm, I'm not talking about you. Okay, that, but I've seen people in my country that I know them from home. That I have never seen them post anything about their church, about their pastor, about their clip, about a revival, about anything. Suddenly they are celebrating. It tells me a lot about them. There are people that will not go on Sunday, go to church on Sunday morning because they want to watch a Nigerian match. There are people that who is your celebrity? My mentor is Tiwa. Who is your mentor? Your mentor is my mentor is uh, who? Who do I use now? Who is your mentor? The people they mention, they will never mention Mommy Becky and Neche. They will never mention Pastor Apostle Edu. They will never mention Apostle Arome. They will never mention young people in the kingdom that are doing well. Their mentors are always negative influences. They say we are learning, we are removing the good part. We are removing the good part. So there are no Christians that have that good part. No, the question is, are there no Christians having that good part you are looking for? It says a lot about the kind of thing you are interested in. Hallelujah. Nowadays, many young people are not interested in becoming students, are not interested in schooling everybody because when you meet, when you win a cowbell competition, they give you a pack of cowbell and 150,000 naira. But when you win a singing competition, you win 6 million naira. So now, now people are no longer interested. They will say, if you sing in church, when you win, they clap for you and lay hands on you. <laughs> but when you sing in the world, so they are not inspired by the church at all. And that says a lot about our generation. Are we together? It's very, very dangerous. What people admire is really, like, 
the kind of things that people defend. Like some people are successful that a particular candidate won election in one country in Africa. It's a, it's a big statement about that person. The, the, is one African country is one of the later in the Alpha Fed. Like, you understand? Like how can you support that kind of a thing? It says a lot about you. What you support says a lot about you. If you support a drug baron becoming XYZ, it says a lot. It says a lot about you. Because a good man supports good things, an evil man supports evil. You may not come out to say you are evil, but inherently, you are dangerous. Who your mentor is, who you celebrate, who you watch, who you... See, when you carry your YouTube today, the first things that come up shows what you always watch. So we can know, if you carry your Facebook today, what always pop up shows what you always view. Right? Yes. Can we search your search engine and see anything about anything gospel, anything inspirational? Why well, many people are not motivated by success that is good. We just want to succeed by any means. Either bad or good, the aim is succeed. There are consequences. Hallelujah. How are the, what are the consequences? Reverse all these benefits. There are the consequences. So rose. You will never be approved by God. And life may not end well with you. But I pray that we will be interested in something good. Come on now, we're together. We do, see, you know, we must celebrate good things. Celebrate marriages. Somebody on, on, on Mother's Day, he sent a happy mother to his six baby mamas. No baby mamas, no, that's the tree. Like six of them, he mentioned their name. Thank you for this, thank you for this. Then there were over 350 comments when I read it. So I read the comment intentionally to see what I will see. 98% of that comment are from baby mamas and men that have baby mamas. You did the right thing. Me too. My baby daddy just sent me a message like this. Me too. I said, I could not believe my eyes. It's no man now that you can. Some people don't want to marry. They want to have children. Like all those kind of. And then we must not celebrate. It's not a good success. It's not good. We must celebrate marriages that are decent and are good. See, we must celebrate our young sisters. They may not have a bum bum that look like a bowl of a stick. Like, like this. Like they may not be carved like that. Because nowadays, a good lady is a lady that has have done surgery and look like, like, like a cartoon. <laughs> like that's what people celebrate as a fine girl. Now, our sisters in church are no longer happy. They are no longer free. They don't move us again. Because the lady is flat. Because she cannot afford surgery. No, you must celebrate good things. Are we together? We must celebrate. We must celebrate our brother that is struggling to marry, and marry in the school field and are struggling. We must celebrate good things. We must be interested in successes that are clean, that you can account. How did that in America? How did I become successful? People can explain in Nigeria. How did I be, did you become successful? Now God do am. Like we people can't explain their success. Why did you succeed? It's God that did it. How? Okay. How? How did the, how did the principle? It's God that did it. No, that is not success. I believe that the Lord will help us to be light, to be inspired by things that are good and, and eternal and have eternal consequences in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's be on our feet as we take our communion. Today is our communion. Say with me, Father, in the name of Jesus, any appetite that I have, any inspiration that I have that is evil, kill it in me in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we share the communion as we pray and say, Father Lord, take away any inspiration that I have that is evil, anything evil that is inspiring me, anything that I want that is evil, Father Lord, take it away in the name of Jesus Christ. Take it away in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and pray and say, Father Lord, give me good success. I want to be able to succeed legally. Give me good success. Grant me the grace to succeed properly. 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 In the name of Jesus. Grant me the grace to succeed properly. In the name of Jesus. Man take it de 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 Let my success be proper. In the mighty name of Jesus.
Say with me, Father, in the name of Jesus, as I choose to obey your will, grant me the grace to survive the trial. Because the devil will always resist people doing the right thing. Ask the Lord for grace. Lord, I will not compromise the standard. I want to do something you will be happy with. I want to do something you will be pleased with. I want to do something that the heaven will celebrate. Grant me the grace, O Lord. Grant me the grace, O Lord. Grant me the grace, O God. Grant me the grace in the name of Jesus. Say me, Father, in the name of Jesus, as I rise, may I not destroy others. May my success not be at the detriment of others. In the name of Jesus, can you open your mouth and pray? Our success must be a win-win situation. Everybody is helped. Everybody is blessed. Everybody is helped. Everybody is blessed. Everybody is helped. Everybody is blessed. Rete belesh kete mele desh rete de bega de rete de bega de rete de bega de rete de balaga diya mante la baga da raga da baga da raga da baga da raga da baga da Father in the name of Jesus shake the belly diya mante kata balaga da may the Lord cleanse our heart of negative inspiration may we not be inspired by evil may we not be inspired by evil may we not be inspired by evil may we not model our life after evil success. May we not model our life other successes that are not original. May our inspiration not come from the darkness. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Father Lord as we partake of the communion we pray and we declare over the bread and over the blood that it is blessed and consecrated to be a blessing to our body. I take authority over every form of sickness, infirmity, diseases. In our cells, in our tissues, in our organs, in our system, I decree over our bones, I decree over our tissues, over our ligament, over our eyes, over our hearing, over every part of us that may be affected one way or the other with the virus, with the bacteria, with the fungi. As we partake of this communion, we are healed in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that infirmity in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, by his stripes we are healed. And he said, we should do this in remembrance of him. I pray to every one of you, make an effort to succeed genuinely. The Bible says, the light shined in darkness and darkness comprehended it not. Joseph was able to succeed in Egypt. Daniel was able to succeed in Babylon. In the dark systems of the world and this country, we will succeed in the name of Jesus Christ. In a ministry, in a world, in a situation full of sorcery, witchcraft, necromancy, people with spells and charm all over, in the name of Jesus, we will scale through and succeed. In the name of Jesus Christ, may we not be tempted to be inspired by evil. May the wrong things not be our motivation. In the mighty name of Jesus, may we have a heart for things that have eternal and heavenly consequence. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The body of Christ. Thank you, Jesus.